number three. I'm here with Maddie Mack, of course. How you doing, Matt? Yo, fine evening tonight. Fine and dandy. Uh, how are you doing, Jet? He's not here, right? Where? I mean, Jazz is not here, apparently. Moving on? Uh, he will He will be missed, but uh, we're going to try and cover the Raptors without him. So, uh, week three, our third different set. What do you think about this, Matt? Nice well, it's, layout. it's all right, you know. Pretty plain, simple, yeah. realistic, you know. To the drawing board if we need. Yeah, we could do, we'd do some Joe Madden X's and O's, I think. And, you know, bell it up. These chairs are kind of confusing. I want to wiggle a lot, but I'm assuming it's not good for the viewers. I mean, it's bright. It smells yeah. like coffee in here. Yeah. And it, I, I don't know if you can tell, but it's Raptors Red, so. As well. It goes with the mood. Yeah, didn't even play it out. There you go. Let's, let's, let's get focused, okay? Let's begin. All right, let's talk about the Raptors. Um, so we are uh, reaching the 20 game mark. We're 14 games right now. Raptors are sitting nine and five. They had a couple big wins back to back against uh, the Rockets and the New Orleans Pelicans. Give us a lowdown on uh, how you think the season's going so far, Matty Mack. Well, looking at what the Raptors have been able to accomplish over the last 14 games this season, you like what you see. They have a nice clean 9-5 record. That's a better record than they've had the past two previous seasons. They've stayed afloat through the injury bug with Jonas Valanciunas missing four games so far this year, Lucas Negrero missing three, and Norman Powell missing two, possibly a little bit more. I'm not too sure how his injury is coming along. Uh, and DeLon Wright going out in the New Orleans game uh, over extending his shoulder. So, you know, looking at missing some time there, but the 9-5 record, it's solid. It's strong. But outside of the entry bug, we're also starting to see the team develop better ball chemistry. Raptors averaging 22.8 assists so far this season, but they saw amazing numbers in Houston, hitting 28 as team assists and 27 assists in New Orleans. So that's pretty wicked too. Um, and overall, you've seen the ball generally flow better and moving out to the perimeter, and guys are knocking down threes better. And so far this season, we've been shooting around 35% from three, but over the past two games in New Orleans and Houston, they averaged 47%, a much better increase. And that's thanks to guys like CJ Miles, knocking down 19 in Houston and 17 in New Orleans. And he was really able to hit his shots in rhythm and really out of some deep positions and really out there and really out of town, you know? And Kyle Lowry was able to do the same thing too, you know? So if you have a couple other guys stepping in and knocking it down, that's critical, especially you want to be making shots because you get bad rebounds off missed threes, and it can really affect the flow of the game. But if that goes in, that's executing the game plan, and that's what you hope to see. So you mentioned Kyle Lowry. He's had two big games, putting up two double-doubles, uh, one assist away from a triple-double against the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, he had a season-high 22 points in New Orleans the other night. He, he's been a big part of this team's success over the last few years. How important is it for Kyle Lowry to get it together and really help this team out moving forward? Having an all-star like Kyle Lowry in the team is pretty awesome. He's an elite passer. He can dribble drive. He can kick it out, shoot from three. He works well with the bigs. He's got a lot going on. He's been paired with DeRozan and have considered one of the top four, top three backcourts in the NBA. This team has really proven itself. They made it as far as the Eastern Conference. They have a lot of playoff experience together. But he knows that every so often there's going to be new players that come into the system. CJ Miles recently came in, a veteran three, but you know it takes some time for him to adjust, for him to get comfortable in the new Raptor shoes, but also you know to find the spacing and where he likes to hit that shots. But Kyle Lowry knows, he knows his players inside out, and I think having an elite passer and someone that's able to work together with the team and really help improve that team chemistry and be your leader and be your guy not afraid to get injured while taking it all the way to the hoop and getting to the free throw line, I mean, he can really slow your game down and really get you down into rhythm and get you out some wins. Looking at the week so far, they, uh, the Raptors had two big, big wins against the, uh, the best in the West, the Houston Rockets. Big win there, and then the very next night, they beat the New Orleans Pelicans. So uh, they got two games coming up against uh, some Eastern rivals in the Atlantic Division New York Knicks and the Washington Wizards. Um, how do you think the next couple games are going to go for the Raps, and how important is it for them to uh, pr keep proving they can beat big teams like Washington? 
I mean, you're right, coming off the win in Houston, that was the first real win of the season. That's when the team looked locked in, 28 assists, team assists. I mean, that looked awesome. They were moving the ball great, shooting the ball well from three, and really just taking care of guys like, you know, James Harden guards 38, but seemed to silence most of the rest of the guns on the Houston Rockets teams, and that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, but looking forward, we got the Knicks on Friday, so we'd, we'd like to see the Raptors slow down Porzingis, but you know, he's gonna get his points. He's gonna be able to crash the glass and you just gotta box him out and put some big men on him, slow him down. But also John Wall, I'd really like to see us take care of Washington Wizards on Sunday at 3.30, that afternoon game that things match up back in Toronto. Really getting that second chance here. And I think that looking at a lot of the video from the past game against them and a lot of insight from Dwayne Casey and the coaching staff, you really gotta listen in and have a guy like Kyle Lowry lead you through a victory. Well, if Lowry can keep building on the success that he had in those two games in Houston and New Orleans, then this, uh, this Raptors team might be ready to uh, take off. Red hot and unstoppable. Look out for it. Okay. All right, ladies and gents, that is, uh, that's week three of Raptors Rewind. Um, I'm not too sure when we're going to see you next or where we're going to be, but uh, I'm sure these lovely chairs will be part of our set. So. Uh, thank you, Maddie Mac, for coming out, and uh, hopefully next time we'll jazz for you. I know viewers are probably disappointed, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have the three. We're looking out for him. Yeah. We'll find him. We're coming for you, Jazz. Peace. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Raptors Rewind. If you liked what you saw, please like our videos and subscribe to Raptors Rewind on YouTube, Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. Tune in next week for another edition of Raptors Rewind.